Good afternoon. Today is June 13, 2015, and this is the house of Arthur Denchfield. And uh, we, this is uh, our first attempt at using uh, Twitter's uh, Periscope. Uh, and so that's what we have here. We have our phone. We have our phone set up here to press a button uh, to go live. Again, this is the Mercator map that my dad made in Brazil in the late 30s before he got married. And it's been in our family uh, ever since. And there's our fan blowing some fresh air on us. And that's Our Lady of Fatima in front of us. Our Lady of Fatima, and what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this on to record uh, this experience. Hopefully it'll, it'll turn out all right. And uh, so here we go. Today's a feast day of St. Clotilda. And uh, on, her link is on my Twitter page. See how this works. Now, Press the, the on button and uh, I'm going to change <laughs> United Kingdom and then I'll be doing the giveaway in two minutes. That's not what I want. That's not what I want at all. Let's see here. Very interesting here. Now, let's see. Oh, my goodness. This is our first attempt using the uh, periscope here. Let's see how this works out. Yes, uh, today is June June third. And uh, this is the cross sword of St. James that I'm wearing here on my black uh, Guayabera uh, Cuban shirt, Cuban Guayabera shirt. And I forgot something. This is all very, very interesting. 
No, there's no, there are no helpers here, so you have to, if you, if you forget something, too bad. Anyway, today is the feast day of St. Clotilda, and um, behind me is the statue of Our Lady Fatima right here, and the Sacred Heart of Jesus right behind her, and over here is a picture of Father Nicholas Gruner leaning on St. Joseph, and here is the message that he's been promoting for many years. This is the June 13, 1929, apparition of the Most Holy Trinity and Our Lady of Fatima at Tui, Spain, to Sister Lucia dos Santos. She was the surviving seer of Our Lady of Fatima's apparitions in 1917. And um, the request that Almighty God made and Our Lady of Fatima at that time, on June 13, 1929, was that the Holy Father, in union with all the Catholic bishops in the world, consecrate Russia. That huge landmass, which I pointed out to you in my YouTube uh, videos, with 12 time zones. It seems that, I, that we got cut off here. I don't know if this is still working or not. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll keep talking. Um, so, uh, what we're asking you to do is to tweet the Pope, P-O-N-T-I-F-E-X, Pontifex, and say, Holiness, I don't want to die in World War III, and the prophecies say that if Russia is not consecrated in time, several nations will be annihilated. And that's, that's the danger. And, uh, I'm assuming that, that this is transmitting. I believe it is, yes. Is it? Yes, it's broadcasting. My name on, on Twitter is um, Arcturos Rex. My name on YouTube is Arcturos Rex, Rex Arcturos, and also Arthur Denchfield. And on Facebook, it's Arthur Denchfield, or Arthur L. Denchfield, or Arthur Layton Denchfield. I have three Facebook accounts. And... Um, what we want to ask you to do now is to support the, uh, the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekolo. He's on radio right now on Periscope, and uh, he's trying to get the four Americans out of Iran before this nuclear, uh, nuclear deal is signed between the United States and Iran. And we ask you to support him. Uh, you'll find his name uh, under, under Periscope and you can listen to his message. It's a very compelling message. One of the Americans is a, is a Marine. Uh, Amir, I believe his name is. I'm a former Marine, and so all you Marines, both active and retired, you should really help get this uh, Marine out of Iran. He's an American citizen, and he's being tortured, and it's terrible. And the other one is, is uh, the other American is a, <clears throat> is a Christian pastor whose wife, uh, beautiful wife and beautiful children have made many appeals uh, on TV and to Congress and so on for, for the American government, the U.S. government to get involved in this. And Obama made a promise to her that her, her husband would be home for his birthday in March and, and it just didn't happen. And so... Uh, what we ask you to do is support Jay Sekulow, who's the head, the founder of the American Center for Law and Justice, and, and, and sign up. They're looking for a million signatures uh, to, to, to present so that that can be part of the, the, the package, the deal. Many things are happening. Many things are happening. Uh, we want to make a comment about... Um, Paolo Serrano's, the young pope, apparently he's, he's making a, a four-part series for television in America where a, a young American conservative is elected pope, and, and, and this is a wonderful opportunity for, for Paul Serrano and some, a, a number of uh, traditionalists and conservative Americans and Europeans and so on to give him some input because... The Vatican is not, is, not a, is not obeying Our Lady of Fatima. The Vatican apparat, apparatus, and Father Nicholas Gruner right here, his picture is, he exposed the, 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 the Vatican party 
so to speak. Uh, for what they are, they've covered up the Fatima message and they will not reveal the, the third secret of Fatima in its entirety. Only partially has been revealed. And this thing here, this very important apparition, for, as far as I know, it's the first time that the Most Holy Trinity and the Mother of Jesus appeared together uh, in a very solemn apparition asking for Russia to be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It should have been done in 1930 and it wasn't. And eight popes, including Francis, have, have disobeyed Almighty God, and yet you have canonizations galore, like uh, John the 23rd was canonized, John Paul the Second was canonized, and yet under these two popes, so to speak, uh, this disobedience took place. Now how can that be? We, we propose that, that Almighty God uh, intervene mightily here through the intercession of all the saints, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, and we ask that, that, that if Francis doesn't do his job, as his seven predecessors did, failed to do, then that Almighty God somehow intervene and allow somebody to, to do that work. Because Russia, Russia is mentioned in Catholic prophecy. And Russia, is, to, to Russia ha, has it been given by Almighty God uh, the annihilation of nations, not to the United States of America, which in fact could very well be annihilated thanks to the Irish. Now I'm part Irish, so you, those of you who say, oh, he's, 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 he's a racist, no, he's not a racist because he named himself after a black saint on his confirmation date, May 1st, 1959, Holy Innocence Catholic Church in New York State, in Pleasantville, New York, right there at St. Martin de Porres, before he was even canonized saint, I took the name Martin de Porres, so you, anti-white black racist who have destroyed America by putting in the White House a, a racist who was born in, in Mombasa, Kenya and, and, and deceived us all thanks to the mass media, the media including Fox, uh, and all you have to do is, is go to YouTube and, and hear the testimony of the Kenyan ambassador to the United States. There goes my alarm again. When Obama was elected president of the United States, and I don't call him president, and that's why I don't go to the VA anymore, because I refuse to look at that the picture of that man on the wall, who, who came in through deception, massive voter fraud. Just go to wewillnotbesilenced2008.com to understand how the Hillary Clinton campaign was outmaneuvered by massive voter fraud in the primaries of 2008. But Hillary would be a tremendous disaster for America and we need we need a conservative entrepreneurial type person who's a veteran who served in the military and there are some good prospects here I think Governor Perry of Texas is one of them we need somebody who's worked who has been a governor uh, over a senator in my opinion who knows how to manage structures organizations and is decisive and as a leader and believes in leading from in front and not leading from behind. Obama, one of the benefits uh, of Obama is he's helped a number of good Americans get, get richer because of their books, the very revealing exposés, but that doesn't help, uh, it doesn't help the country in a sense that the country keeps getting smaller and, and weaker and, and so on. You can see it by the flag here. That American flag is very small, it used to be very big, but now the flag has diminished in size because the power of America has, to, has diminished in size, thanks to Obama. And the lies and the deceptions and the racism, most white Americans are not racist, they don't even think about race, but a lot of, most black Americans are racist. They are, they, they, they are racist with one another, uh, light colored uh, blacks, they look down on darker colored blacks and all the shades in between. There are all kinds of racism going on in the black community in America. That's not true for Jamaicans who come here and do very well. And so uh, many a black American will say, how come he's, he's doing so well? He's only been here three years. He owns his own business. He has a home. And I'm, I'm still on welfare. Well, that's because you have the victim mentality that Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and so on have, have, have brainwashed black Americans to accept this as, as dogma. 
And now we, we run the risk that our cities are burning uh, because of false charges made uh, by people using communist propaganda techniques uh, to say, uh, talk about Ferguson and Baltimore and so on. And, and they're always jumping the gun, and it's, it's really unfair, it's sad, and it's got to stop, and it's got to stop soon. We, uh, uh, again, about the Irish, the Irish, they voted. Ireland supposedly is a Catholic country, and Ireland voted yes to same-sex marriage, and St. Patrick made a prophecy, St. Patrick, the a apostle of Ireland, he made a prophecy many, many centuries ago that Ireland, God would not allow Ireland to be ruled by paganism or the Antichrist. And same-sex marriage is, is, the, is the beginning of the end. It's actually the end of the end. Civilizations that adopt same-sex marriage as, as a law, they, they don't live long at all. They, they vanish. They're conquered. They're destroyed and so on, just like Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by Almighty God uh, in the Old Testament. Ireland's going to be underwater, and that's a prophecy that a great saint, St. Patrick, made that God would not allow Ireland to be uh, enslaved or com com commandeered by the Antichrist or by paganism. And so those former uh, conquests by England and so on, England it was supposedly, I mean, was a Christian nation, was not a pagan nation. But now we're talking about something that cries out to heaven for vengeance. Evil has no rights. And, and sodomy is intrinsically evil, and th therefore sodomy has no rights. And you can say the same for communism. Evil has no rights. Communism is intrinsically evil. Therefore, communism has no rights. And what we're saying to you now is that the Cumbre Vieja volcano there uh, in the uh, Las Palmas on the Canary Islands Almighty God, in order to, uh, to, to comply, to fulfill a prophecy made by a great saint many centuries ago, may allow that volcano to go into the ocean sooner than later because of this Irish boat. Yes, when the Cumbre Vieja volcano goes into the ocean, uh, the tsunami that it generates will, pro will, will not only put Ireland underwater and, and a lot of Europe underwater, the, the coastlines of Europe, but will traverse the Atlantic Ocean in eight hours. And it will hit every city and town between Maine and the Florida Keys on the east coast of the United States. And that wave, that huge wave, uh, according to Caribbean 360, they did a special report last year about that, uh, an alert. It will, it will totally overwhelm Cuba, uh, the, the Caribbean, uh, Trinidad, uh, where my family and I lived for a while in the 50s. Uh, Trinidad, the British West Indies, former British West Indies, uh, Venezuela, Colombia, and the northeastern portion of South America will all be hit by this wave. That is the, the, the coastal areas. And so if you want to blame anybody, if you want to blame anything, you have to blame liberalism. Liberalism has infected the Irish. Liberalism has infected America. Liberalism is a virus, and you should read about it. Liberalism is a sin.com. You can read that book online without paying for it. Liberalism is a sin.com, written by a, a, a Catholic priest in the 19th century in Spain. That's one book that you should read. Another book that you should read is the book I have here underneath the globe. It's, it's called Revolution, Counter-Revolution by Plinio Correa de Oliveira. You can read that online as well. Plinio Correa de Oliveira is the founder of the Society for the Defense of Tradition, Family, and Property, and a, a uh, anti-communist civic organization of Catholic inspiration that helped save Brazil from communism in 1964 and helped save Chile from communism in 1973, and in 1990, in the summer of 1990, uh, in a worldwide signature collection campaign, collected over 5,280,000 signatures for the freedom of Lithuania. And these signatures were presented to President uh, Laos Bergas of Lithuania in microfilm, and the Lithuanians, they received a tremendous moral boost there, and they went out in the streets and they went out and protested against the Soviets and all that. 
and, 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 and the Soviet Union was dismantled shortly thereafter. That's in the book, in the Guinness Book of World Records, which I have here. Anyway, um, we ask you to use your fingers to help to help the four Americans be released uh, from their, their tormentors in Iran by signing that petition that Jay Sekulow, who's the head of the American Center for Law and Justice, uh, that, 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 that he has, that he's campaigning for, and also to, to um, there's my alarm again, to, to tweet the Pope and, and tell the Pope, P-O-N-T-I-F-E-X, holiness, I don't want to die in a nuclear war. Holiness, please obey Almighty God. Obey the June 13, 1929 request that the Trinity and Our Lady of Fatima made to, for the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is what Father Nicholas Gruner, he dedicated his life to. And he died last month, April 29, uh, 2015. He and I are the same age. Uh, I was born March 6, 1942 in Brazil, and he was born May 4, 1942. I, I studied to be a priest in a seminary. I was in for a couple of years when I left, and, the, and only later did I find out the reason I left was my calling vanished, and it vanished exactly around the time the Vatican Council II began. But Father Nicholas Gruner was faithful to the traditional teachings of the Catholic Church, and he and John Venary of Catholic Family News They've had a number of conferences all over the world. They have a TV channel, and there are bishops, literally, I, I believe at least 20 or 30 bishops from India and other parts of Asia, especially in Africa, that have hearkened to what Father Gruner has written, his books and his warnings and so on. He's been demonized in America. He's been demonized by the, the communists in, in the Vatican. Yes, the Vatican is, is totally compromised by communism, by liberalism. And that's why we pray and hope that Paolo Serrano, Serrano I believe his name is, uh, who's going to make that TV series about a young American pope, a young American who becomes pope, a conservative anti-communist pope and so on, and starring Jude Law, who's an extraordinary actor. It is our prayer and hope that the script will reflect uh, the, the attitude and the opinion of at least a billion Christians who are very concerned about what's going on. And, and we, we, ask, we, we, we ask the whole, uh, Holy Father, and you can tweet him, P-O-N-T-I-F-E-X, Pontifex, or Pontifex-E-S for Spanish, and so on, to, to make the consecration according to our, our Lady's request and fulfill God's will now. If not, holiness, you're going to die. You're going to die a terrible, violent death, and it will probably happen this year. And not only will you die, but a lot of cardinals are going to shed their blood too. And it didn't have to happen like this. But that's the price of disobedience. And the Irish are going to pay a price too. The Irish, the wonderful Irish people, I'm part Irish. My grandmother, Sarah Jane O'Brien, Denchfield, after she got married to my grandfather, medical doctor, she came over from Ireland, County Clare, at the age of 17, and uh, to New York, and she met my grandfather, who was, uh, she was 10 years older than my grandfather when they got married. And it was thanks to Sarah Jane O'Brien Denchfield, my grandmother, that the whole Denchfield family became Catholic. My father went to Notre Dame University, and my aunt Margaret went to the sister university of Notre Dame, which I forget the name now, but uh, in those days, in the 20s and 30s and 40s and so on, Catholic, Catholic universities or colleges were either for men or for women. They did not mix them. Why? Because Pius XII and a whole line of popes have, have said that men, boys and girls should be separated at the age of 12. And now there's all of that prudence, great prudential uh, teaching is, is thrown out the window along with so many other things and, and the wrath of God has been, has been triggered and so we, we really th feel that, that things are really coming to a head. As far as Natalie Holloway is concerned, our godfather, his name was Mr. Uh, uh, Cyril Marriott. 
I was baptized in the Cathedral of Our Lady Mother of God in Porto Alegre, Brazil on the 5th of April, 1942. A Catedral de Nossa Senhora, Mãe de Deus. And my godfather was Mr. Cyril Marriott. And so I appeal to those who run the Marriott International Hotel chain to allow Natalie Holloway's uh, family and allow the FBI access to that uh, resort there in Aruba uh, because apparently that's where Natalie Holloway is buried according to the uh, uh, good uh, testimonial by a Dutch man who happened to be present at that time and saw what happened. And now I have to go again. This eagle here says repent underneath and that eagle is not only the eagle of America, the eagle of Germany, the eagle of the Holy Roman Empire and also the eagle of of St. John the Evangelist, but it's also an eagle of St. Vincent Ferrer. And now I have to go. I think my, 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 my broadcast is over. Well, that was my attempt, that was my humble attempt to put this on the periscope, and that's like 26 minutes, almost 27 minutes, and we ask Almighty God to have mercy on this country, have mercy on, on, on not only America, but have mercy on the Catholic Church, because the events are unfolding very quickly. And we ask Almighty God to intervene also for the four Americans who are being held against their will in, in Iran or being tortured by them. And that uh, the American Center for Law and Justice under uh, uh, Mr. Jay Sekulow, he get that million signatures he needs uh, for, so that this can be part of the nuclear uh, demand between the U.S. government and the government of Iran which is really a very bad deal and it's really a shame that all these things have been allowed to, to happen. It's outrageous. But that's for another day. Meanwhile, while today is the feast day of St. Clotilda and her story is on Twitter uh, there. If you just go there and read it for yourself by Plinio Correa de Rivera. And that's it. God bless you.